Hi everybody, I'm Dan Gottlieb, analyst and Gartner for Sales, and I'm really thrilled to be here today for this panel about why CRM is your sales superpower. I'm joined here by Morgan J. Ingram and Nicole Desjardins, and we're gonna have a conversation today about, specifically, why CRM is the superpower for one of the most <laughs> important roles in the sales organization, the frontline seller. So, Morgan and Nicole, uh, before we kind of get in, I kind of want to set this backdrop with a little story about a blog post that we wrote recently um, called well, the uh, Naked Emperor CRM Gets New Robes. And, you know, CRM, look at where we are right now, right? At Dreamforce, it delivers undeniable value to organizations. Nine out of 10 organizations have a CRM. And um, however, when we think about the story of the uh, emperor gets new robes, Hans Christian Andersen's folktale, you know, the story where there's a swindler who comes to town and they convince the emperor uh, that they can weave them a robe that is, has invisible uh, or that, that only the wise can see. And so none of the, uh, none of the uh, hands actually tell, or no one tells the emperor that, you know, they're not wearing any clothes. And so the emperor goes into town and they're walking around and a kid points to the emperor and is like, hey, Emperor's not wearing any clothes, and everyone starts laughing, right? And, and in this story, you know, the, uh, the CRM is certainly the emperor because the, f and, and, and the child pointing out is the seller. Um, we did a research study recently at Gartner, 59% of, it was a seller motivation study. So what motivates sellers? And 59% of sellers said that the adoption of new tech is actually a hindrance to their job. Now, this isn't to say that, that CRM doesn't create a ton of value, uh, but what this is to say is that, you know, for a lot of organizations, maybe they haven't set up the CRM to actually deliver value to the end user, the frontline seller themselves. And so, you know, obviously we're, we're going to talk a little bit about maybe from our research what we think different ways to address it is because it is about getting new robes. But before we get into all of that, I'm going to stop my rant here. <laughs> and I just want, I think everyone should learn a little bit about you two and then let's jump into these questions. So maybe uh, just introduce yourself, um, what you do and one fun fact about you that I wouldn't find on LinkedIn. Yeah, awesome. Well, we'll I'll start. Um, Morgan J. Ingram. Uh, I do the J because, you know, we, we got we to add it in there. And I do sales coaching and content creation on LinkedIn. Been doing it for years. And it's been a great opportunity for me to, to train and coach a lot of different clients uh, in the high growth space, SDR teams, AE teams on prospecting. And a fun fact about me is in high school, I won two state championships in basketball. That's cool. Yeah. That's a fun fact. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yep. Nicole? That's really impressive. Not as impressive as me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll think of a, a sports-related fun fact. Um, so I'm Nicole Desjardins. Um, I am a senior director at LinkedIn. I head uh, product and solutions marketing at LinkedIn Sales Solutions. And a fun fact for me um, is I, I used to take badminton lessons from a former Olympian in Hong Kong um, because Hong Kong's very good at badminton for the Olympics. It's way cooler than mine. Well, you actually won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but that ben, badminton's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I, I cover um, sales tech in the Gartner for Sales practice. And I guess in the spirit of a fun fact, I'll divert away from sports. Um, I did stand-up comedy in New York earlier in my career while also carrying a quota. So uh, I would say that that is uh, probably a little bit of the masochist in me, <laughs> but here we are. And I think it's time for us to start talking about the panel subject. So I'm gonna start with a question for Morgan. Um, so Morgan, why, why do you think from your experience personally, but also from all of the thousands of, of organizations that you've interacted with, yeah. why do you think sellers are more resistant to working with CRM or maybe what is it about them that, that yeah. they aren't uh, as big of a fan of? Yeah, so you know we have to address the the elephant in the room here. And by the, I don't like elephants because I'm University of Georgia, Alabama, <laughs> so I'm not like I'm not a huge I'm not a huge fan of elephants. But we got to address it. And it's because when you get into the CRM, there's all these rules and regulations, and you have to file in all these different reports and details. And a seller is just trying to hit their quota, and they feel like oh I have to go in my CRM. It's getting me away from what I'm being asked to do, which is hit my number. I just want to talk to people and close deals. I don't want to have to deal with the CRM. Mm -hmm. So most sellers see it as the enemy. However, that's the wrong way of thinking about it. You should be seeing the CRM as an ally. 
it has so much data, so much reporting in it. And it could really help you as a seller to figure out what are the best accounts that I should be going after, who should I be selling to, what stories should I be sharing. There's so much information in there. However, how most organizations are set up, it creates friction with the seller and ops, and then there's always that conflict where they should be coming together to figure out what type of details should we be putting in the CRM to get better ultimately. And as the seller understands that the data and the reporting is there, they can make more proficient decisions and they can be better at selling. And as we go into this environment that we're in right now, we've obviously had the pandemic, selling has changed and the buyer has changed as well. So the more that you can educate yourself on getting the right insights from your CRM, the better that you're going to be able to sell where people are getting nervous about selling things in nature. You're going to be more proficient and you're going to be a trusted advisor to your buyers. Yeah, you know, it's, it's so interesting. I mean, it, it, uh, it's, it's one of those scenarios, you know, where uh, as, as an individual, it can actually be really tiring. It's, it's, a, it's a draining activity. Yeah. The end of a day where you have all these conversations to sit down and, 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 and actually have to sort of then reflect and type, on, uh, type up all the different things that happened. However, in, that's actually an incredibly useful reflective exercise. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm pretty sure that there was a, you know, a statistic from, from something that LinkedIn did that indicated that there's a relationship between CRM use and top performers. Yeah, there is. Um, in fact, top performers, what's really interesting um, is they spend less time selling than an average performer. So they, they spend about 10% less time selling. And what they're doing is they are, um, they're spending more time researching, more time looking at their data. And that CRM data is so important for their purposes, for them to do a good job, to understand the, to understand the buyer that they're working with, understand the accounts, and really taking that time. Um, and of course, the basis of taking that time means you have to have high quality data in your CRM and you have to take the time to um, make sure that everything that you have in there is accurate. Well, you certainly spend a lot of time thinking about this being in product for uh, s focusing on sellers. So. Um, we, we, can, you know, we can acknowledge staying on top of CRM data. It can be dull, it can be time consuming, it can be mentally draining, low value activities to, to an individual. Um, so what do you think can be done about this? I've got a take, but I, I definitely wanna hear Nicole's take on this first. Yeah, I think our, our take is pretty similar, Dan. I, I don't think it has to be dull. It doesn't have to be time consuming. And there's two ways to do this, you know. First is we need to um, remove some of that feeling of paperwork and manual labor that comes with keeping your CRM updated. We need to automate processes as much as possible um, and increase productivity and efficiency for sellers. Um, and then I think the second thing is we need to make CRM work for sellers and sales organizations alike. You know, right now, a lot of the belief is that CRM is for sales organizations and for the benefit of sales organizations, but not so much for sellers. Um, we need to change that a little bit and um, answer the what's in it for me for a seller. And if you can have CRM bring value to the individual seller, and it doesn't take a lot of work for, for that seller themselves, then it's a huge win. Um, and as a seller, I'm gonna be more likely to be inclined um, to value my CRM data to make sure it's constantly updated. I think this is such a unique challenge because sales is such a brute force profession. It's also a survival profession. We've just sort of uh, find these ways to get through, to get to our number, uh, maybe heroic, uh, maybe unscalable exercises. And I think that, you know, if you were to ask a salesperson what you can do about it, uh, a lot of the times they wouldn't answer directly with sort of um, maybe questions about tech. They would answer more questions about their territory, about the assets or the resourcing they have available to do deals, et cetera. But in general, um, the way we think about it at Gartner around solving this problem is that there's, there's a, a whole variety of categories of technology that sit on top of CRM that are emerging to help address this issue. And they all have some combination of these two innovations in common. The first one is innovation in the user experience of a seller uh, to actually uh, perform some CRM tasks. A really good example of this is just reducing clicks. 
like you're in prospecting. Mm. How many clicks does it take to oh. just like <laughs> prospect <laughs> one person? So many clicks, yeah. So if you think about all the applications you have to go through to then make a call, send an email, uh, con uh, connect with someone on LinkedIn, you yeah. know, like these are, um, the amount of clicks that takes, if you add that up over a day, it's insane. Yeah. And so just being able to think about like, okay, how can I maybe reduce the number of clicks is, is something that is so simple, you know, for us to sit here and talk and think about, and it almost is invisible to a rep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the other use case is AI. Data capture is, is such a good use case for AI. You know, why would I ask you who attended the call when I can just take it from your calendar and attach it to, to a record? Yeah. You know, like that, so, so there's all this innovation that's available here, and the whole point of that whole blog post was the new robes is there's a variety of, of tools that we can use. So um, the next question I'd love to sort of react to here is, are sellers maybe missing the bigger picture here on adopting tech, adopting CRM, or maybe why should sales see a smarter CRM as a superpower instead? Morgan? Yeah, so, I mean, you talked about all these clicks, right? <laughs> like, like I was thinking about, I was like, that's a lot, because there's a lot going on. You even talk about AI. I think where most salespeople aren't seeing the bigger picture is they're thinking, you know, a sales rep thinks like a on a monthly basis. Like, I need to go hit my quota. So if this doesn't help me hit my quota within this month, I don't care about all this other things. That's the reality. However, a seller that's really thinking about this on a bigger picture is like every single input and data that I put into the CRM, I can use moving forward to be more like thoughtful in the way that I sell. I don't have to do all these clicks, right? I don't have to go after 5,000 people. I can be very, very precise in who I go after because I've collected data over time to figure out exactly where to go. And most people aren't thinking quarter, year out. They're thinking, I just get it to my month. Uh, that's all I care about. But like, no, you gotta think about the long term of your career and the long term of even being a sales leader, right? On leading your team said, hey, this is how I ran my book of business by using the CRM. And you can use that to continuously scale your team moving forward. So again, like I talked about earlier, it's like, don't treat the CRM as an enemy. You can see it as an ally to get reports and things of that nature. I know when I was an SDR, most of the prospecting I did was inside of the CRM, pulling reports, seeing what activity is being done, what accounts are closing right now that I can go in that same industry and target those people. Which company sizes are we seeing the most velocity and closes with? Okay, that's probably a company size I need to go after if we haven't segmented out yet. So these are things that most sellers aren't thinking about because a seller's mindset is short term instead of long term. Well, I see it, you know, having carried a quote on myself, I, I certainly identify with that yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with that with that mentality that survivors mentality of like, I'm, I just need to get to the next period of time um, however uh, you know the, the the because of that it's almost like half of my time is so occupied right now that I only have a limited amount of right. you know capacity to think about bigger picture topics and I think that one of the cool opportunities for companies is just you know who the best person to teach a salesperson? Their peers, mm -hmm. yep. you know? And so just trading notes on like how you're handling, how you're thinking about doing your job every day is such a valuable way to improve using those tools. Yeah. I'm curious how you think about this, Nicole. Yeah, I don't think they're necessarily um, missing the bigger picture. Um, as you were saying, you know, it's more about focus, that short-term focus versus long-term focus. Um, and I do think that um, this is about a mindset shift, right? So the technology to make your CRM work for you as a seller is relatively newer. Um, and sellers need to, to shift that mindset from thinking of CRM as just another like task, something that your manager is always like breathing down your neck to get done and like, you know, just something that's taking you away from selling. Shifting that mindset away from that way of thinking towards thinking about CRM as something that can really work for you. And I like to think of like, you know, the power of the data that sits in your CRM and any other sales intelligence data sources you have as well. Um, and really thinking about it as a seller, as a crystal ball for selling, a seller superpower, if you may. Like, how amazing would it be if you understood that 
when you bring these dis disparate sources of data together, mm -hmm. it can really help you uh, identify the accounts and buyers that matter, prioritize them, understand when they're ready to buy and what they care about when you reach out to them. I think that is something um, that requires that mindset shift. And in order for it to happen um, for sellers, there has to be more, right? It has to be really easy to do. Um, it has to increase your productivity and efficiency. And um, in that sense, it's really just working for you in every way possible. So I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think that, you know, the, the concept of mindset shift, I mean, you talk about this all the time. Yeah you know, is, is essential to, to survive in, and to sort of through brute force become good at your job in sales. Um, I, however, I take issue with the entirety of the burden falling on the individual seller. I, I, I believe that sales organizations, you know, um, so one of, my, one of my peers does research on sales analytics. Yep. And um, data literacy is sort of this like nerdy topic uh, that, that we talk about a lot. And um, there was sort of a broader Gartner study that basically found that, well, the short story of it is the least two data literate roles in the company are frontline sales rep, frontline sales manager. And so when we talk about data literacy, being able to understand mm. what data is valuable and how to activate data that's valuable, and we talk about all the burden being on the frontline seller to not all the burden I'm being a little hyperbolic here, but still a lot of the burden being on the frontline seller. There's this hesitation of like, I don't even know what I'm doing. You know, like yeah. I'm not even sure where to start here. And so I think that the organization has a huge role to play in simplifying where to look, what to look for, how to look for it and making those practices more available. And, you know, if you combine those two things, investment in mindset, investment in better design yeah. around how you use, find information, I think that's where the, the that's the recipe that we're looking for here. Um, I think we could talk about this for hours. Yeah, yeah, we, we absolutely could. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, okay, question for you, Morgan. Changes in uh, process, um, attitude, they, they tend to come from the top. So. What can a sales leader do from your point of view to improve buy-in from their teams? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing you have to look at first is like, what is creating the friction? So what is happening that is preventing people from putting whatever information you want in the CRM? Do you have way too many fields? Do you, are you recommending a lot of things that maybe it's out of your control, right? Like you need someone else's team to do it and they're not doing it. I think it comes down to like what we're truly looking for. So the first thing you need to look at as a sales leader is like, what are like the metrics we're really looking to impact? And then based on the metrics you're looking to impact, then we can figure out what fields do we need to put in here that are recommended. I find that a lot of sales teams that I've worked with in the past, they have like 50 fields. Well. I'm probably not gonna fill up 50 fields as a sales <laughs> rep. Like, I'm, this is not gonna happen, right? Oh, for sure. And that leads to like terrible data health across the board. Right. So it's like, okay, like let's start small. Maybe there's like five that we really need to focus on. Everyone needs to put these five in. And then we can elevate over time because the goal is as a sales leader, you wanna take that data and then start painting a story. Hey, all the reason that we're doing this data, we did in the past 30 days, here's the data set that we've gotten on like accounts we can go after. This is how we're gonna choose our top tier accounts. This right. is how much deals we've closed from it. Because ultimately, the reason that a seller wants to do something is to find out I can make more money from it or I can move faster. But you have to start small with things that can be really impactful towards our metrics and then build on it from there. <laughs> you know, it, it's incredibly practical yeah. when you think about it that way. Yeah. Um, so, so much of the tension that exists is we, we, you know, the history of CRM has been about extracting value for the business. Yes. And I, I totally agree with you that there's, there's this really like simple thing you can do. It's actually Absolutely. like a branding exercise, yeah. a messaging exercise around, exactly. you know, okay, what are the things you do, do every day? You got a prospect, you have discovery calls, yep. you have demonstrations, you have proposal conversations, proof of concept meetings. Like, yep. like what are the ways that the data that's available to you help you with those activities? How does right. it help you adapt your tactics, improve the conversation that you're using? And you know, like modeling that. I think that, that that's a simple thing that a sales leader, if we're being real, needs to get the sales support organization to get on board. Absolutely. Right? Um, that's absolutely number one. But I think number two is you can spend some money on this problem. 
Yeah. You can spend money on tech that either captures better data, removes the mundane, or makes data more available. And, and um, I think that another thing that, that we haven't really talked about is what's the role in, in data in your culture? You know, yeah. how do you make, you don't, you don't want to say like, oh, Nicole's the best. She updates her ops on time, <laughs> yeah. all the time. You know, that's not what we're talking about here. Yeah. What we're talking about here is, you know, making it more obvious where um, using CRM data to inform how we celebrate what's going on inside the business. And like a simple example of this is like pushing things that happen to CRM into these like cultural channels in Slack and Teams, for example. Yeah. You know? Like, oh, these, if this activity happens there, then this, like, you know, information. Like the automation of, of how it all needs to go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we're celebrating it there. And I think that that's, like, you know, a really smart way to yeah. incorporate that data into the culture that, that makes it feel like, oh, there's, a, there's actually, like, a social reward yeah. for this activity. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so we could talk, anyways, because I, I think that there's a lot of really cool things that have happened, especially in the last few years in that regard. Yeah. But we don't have time. We only have a few minutes left. So, Cole, I have a question for you. Have to ask. You know, you're obviously with what you do. I'm very curious. How does LinkedIn think about sort of their product strategy and integration with CRM? I've done a lot of briefings with LinkedIn over the years. I've asked you know these questions. I think it's been interesting. But what what can users expect um, that that may make their jobs easier? Yeah. Um, well, think about it this way. Uh, so. Uh, CRM is this treasure trove of customer and marketing data, but it often just sits there, you know, until somebody goes in and accesses it. And then LinkedIn Sales Navigator and LinkedIn Sales Insights are LSS products, LinkedIn Sales Solutions products. Um, they offer sales organizations a gateway into the world's largest professional network. It is truly gigantic and vast. We've got 850 million plus members, 58 million plus companies across 200 countries and territories globally. You know, we have data on buyers, on relationships, on companies that nobody else has. It's truly astounding. Now imagine if you take the power of your CRM data and you sync it with the power of the LinkedIn network, that LinkedIn professional network that's the largest in the world. Um, and the opportunities are vast. We're able to serve up personalized, timely, accurate insights on your buyers and your accounts that you care about in real time. Um, and it's truly impressive. So for, for a seller, I think this works in two ways. Um, the first way is that we uh, make it easier for you to keep your CRM updated without even having to go into CRM. And I can give a few examples here. So for example, you could, um, we can automatically upload your book of business into Sales Navigator so you can action on it directly within Sales Navigator. Uh, we can automatically write back your activity to CRM so you don't actually have to go in and manually do that. And we can create accounts leads, uh, contacts directly from Sales Navigator with just a few clicks and it's in your CRM. So, you know, once again, I'm talking about productivity and efficiency, making things easier for reps to spend more time selling, but still keep that CRM up to date. Um, and then second, the piece I'm most excited about is we have the ability to bring CRM data into Sales Navigator. And um, of course, with the power of the LinkedIn data as well, we're able to generate these really timely insights um, within your workflow as a seller so that you don't need to, you know, Data, we're, you know, we're not very data literate in the sales organization. At least we're not like getting all nerdy in the data either. And it can feel like overload. It can feel very, very noisy. How do you know what matters? Um, and what LinkedIn does is we take all of those data signals and we create insights and we know when it matters and we know what matters and who matters to you. And we'll be able to serve that up during your workflow. So one example would be like, um, let's say you have a past customer uh, at a closed one opportunity who's moved companies and um, you didn't know they moved companies. We can tell you that they just joined a new company and oh, by the way, that company 
happens to be growing as well, and they just raised another round of funding, wouldn't now be the perfect time to reach out and meet that person and get to know them a little bit more and say, hey, how have you been doing? It's been a while since we last talked. Um, I think these are the things that you know, LinkedIn and our CRM integration, when you take the power of CRM data and LinkedIn data together, it can be truly, truly powerful. And then of course, for a sales leader in a sales organization, you're building a solid data foundation so you can make better and better decisions over time. So you're benefiting both the seller as well as the org. Right on. I, I could ask you a million questions, but luckily I got another, <laughs> I got another venue to do that. Um, so, I mean, what's one piece of advice, you, you talk about using this yeah. product all the time. Yeah. What's one piece of advice you would give to our listeners about how they can improve the use of uh, LinkedIn and CRM data together? Yeah, so I'm gonna go in two lanes. I'm gonna go for the sales rep, for the sales leader, for the, from the sales rep's perspective, what you need to do right now is create a report of all of the clients that you've worked with mm -hmm. and just be like, all right, these are all my people. And then as part of that as well, create a report of all the, just all the customers that you have closed lost. Mm -hmm. And just go through that and figure out, okay, like, is there a closed loss campaign that I can go start doing right now? Reach out to these clients, figuring out why did I lose? That actually gives you really good insight on how you can do better discovery moving forward. It can give you an insight of like, how are you losing these deals? Like, oh, I keep losing on competitive scenarios. All right, you probably should figure out how to do that better moving forward, right? Maybe you're realizing the people that I'm bringing in the beginning of the deal, these are the wrong people. So I need to stop reaching out to these people. Close loss has all the information you need to be a better seller. And most people never look at it because people don't like looking at stuff that they've lost, right? Like I would rather <laughs> yeah, watch the game right. where I drop 60 points yeah. than the game where I turn over the ball, right? That yeah. I turn over the ball like 20 times, right? I don't watch that game, but that's where you learn. Yeah. And most people aren't willing to do that. So create your close, close loss, <clears throat> this is what works. Close one, this is where we're winning. And on the sales leader side, it's going back to what I said. What are the three metrics that we're trying to improve? Let's start creating reports around that. Let's start creating guidelines around that so we can ultimately be successful. And tactically, you can start moving in that direction. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, I would say that uh, I have, if I have three takeaways from today, I would say that there, um, the, the way that maybe we can uh, think about improving using CRM data as a frontline sellers is, what are ways that can improve my live meeting itself, the actual engagement? Uh, what are ways that can simplify my workflows or even additional technologies that can improve it? Or how can I just adapt my general tactics, maybe who I contact, why I contact them, when do I contact them based on, based on some of the data that's available? Um, this has been an awesome conversation. Uh, I wanna thank all of you that have tuned in and are listening. I wanna thank Nicole, I wanna thank Morgan, this has been a fun conversation. I hope you all took away at least one or two interesting thoughts, discussions, takeaways that you can take in action in your business today. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.